Hello, my name is Love the Drunk, and today I will be hopefully shedding some light on the mystery that is positioning as a forward in Omega Strikers. Have you ever thought or said the following statements? I don't know where to stand. I feel useless. The core never comes to me. My striker feels so slow. I'm dead. Uh, again. Or anything similar? If you have found yourself saying any of the following, you likely have been a victim of your own bad positioning, which we are going to attempt to remedy right here. At the time of recording this video, I am a mid-diamond IME forward player. I have not been playing the game since beta, like most of the high-ranking players, so I recently had to learn how to position just like you are about to be. Now before we get into the meat of this video, I want to remind everyone that this was made for educational purposes. As such, I've hidden all player names, because if I'm talking about anyone in my games other than myself, I do not want to bring flame or hate or anything to that person. This is a game, and we should be having fun with it. All of the games were recorded in normal games, so that I could get a wide range of skill levels, so that the footage shown might look similar to the games you play. Before we get into the discussion of positioning, I need to introduce two concepts that may or may not be new to you. Those two concepts are area of influence and passing windows. Area of influence is the area of the map that you can influence with your abilities. With most abilities and strikers, it is a circle that extends to the range of the abilities. Do note that this area changes constantly. Are your abilities on cooldown? If so, your area of influence is the range of your strike. Did you take missile propulsion on Luna? Now your area of influence is basically the entire map. The smaller of area of influence, the better your positioning needs to be. As you get better, you will learn to be more mindful not just of your areas of influence, but also your allies and enemies area of influence. A really simple example of this is that Atlas is weak against cross passes, as he has a very small area of influence because of his lack of mobility. Mobility, depending on the speed, effectively adds to your area of influence. As your ability to be somewhere you were not, and then use an ability even further away from where you started, means that you can quickly influence an area from very far away. Rune is an easy to understand example of this. Wherever Rune's shadow is placed, the area of influence he has around him is the same at his shadow. Passing windows. This is probably a simple enough concept to understand, but I wanted to make sure that we all understood what this was so that when talking about it later, it makes sense. A passing window is a space between the enemy strikers where you can get a core to a fellow striker or where you could receive the core. Here are a few examples that will demonstrate the passing windows. The clip that I'm about to show is a simple example of a passing window. X has the core at the bottom of the screen, and he is going to pass it up to myself so that I can easily redirect it in. Note that keeping in mind the Rasmus and Vice's areas of influence, which I have shown here in red, roughly, um, the X is going to try to keep it outside of those, and I am going to try to shoot it outside of those so that nobody can stop the core from going in. Yes, in this example, we are man up. We have the striker advantage. And it is also worth noting that you may be in this exact spot and the X may not decide to hit it to you. That is something that we will be talking about a bit. Um, but as long as you put yourself in the right position to receive the core, you're setting yourself up for good things to happen. In this next clip, I set up a really obvious passing lane for my rune by using the middle of night market to make myself open. As you can see from the still, the area of influences of all of the opposing strikers are significantly out of the range of mine and the runes, which allows him to give me a pass straight through the middle, which I can then try to make a play off of. In this clip, nothing comes of it, but it does help us keep the core on the opposing side of the field, and the longer the core is there, the better your chances of scoring. As a reminder, the walls can be your friend when it comes to passing lanes. 
In this clip scene here, the Octavia is going to strike the core down at the wall to get it to come back up to me so that they can get it around the Juliet. But if they hit it straight to me, the Juliet would likely get it away from me and be taking it um, towards our side of the field. So, in order to prevent that, the Octavia puts it below me where you can see, based on our uh, areas of influence, I have better positioning to the bottom of the field than the Juliet, which will give me the ability to act first and keep the core away from her. Passing windows can always be intercepted by abilities or close faster than you expect. Understanding how and when this might happen comes with time and practice. Another video I plan on making is about where to hit the core, and we will discuss this further. Now I know that you might be thinking, oh wow, this video is already so long, we haven't even talked about positioning as a forward yet, but it's finally time, let's talk about how to position. In general, there are a few key rules to follow, and we'll go over those right now. First off, be spread out, it's a ping for a reason, dude. Omega Strikers is a team game. You are not gonna win it without your team, Thus, you're going to have to trust your other forward and goalie to do their jobs. Give them space to do it and let them cook. Now, I understand that not all your teammates are going to be good in your eyes. And if that's the case, you can play it differently. But in general, the people are the rank they are for a reason and you're that same rank. Trust them to do what they're supposed to do. If your other forward is bad in your eyes, it's likely that your goalie is seeing and thinking the same thing. So when they get the core, it's more likely to go to you if you make yourself available. This clip is going to show a really good example of spreading out and how it helps move the core around. Um, myself and the X are playing on opposite sides of Night Market. Notice that I have made myself open to be passed to if the X thinks he can't get it past the Octavia. And notice that the Rasmus is not stacked up on the X at the bottom because he understands that if I'm up here by myself, then the core is just going to come to me. We'll probably get a bumper for free. So understanding that you need to both play spread out and across from each other and be in a position to receive the core, which isn't always possible, especially on Night Market. But doing this allows the X the space to win the one-on-one -on -one versus Octavio. And if he can't, I can try to overload the Octavia and come down and help. Which would probably be me blinking on her to try to push her off the map or just bother her. Um, or it'll get back to my rune, who will then get it to me. And it'll give the X time to get his abilities back get his cooldowns up so that maybe in the future he can win that 1v1 against the Octavia. Setting yourself up for these one-on-ones one -on -ones is the best chance you're going to get at letting someone be successful. Because if he can't win his one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I can win mine up here, and maybe he can win it later in the game. It's not like this Octavia is just strictly better than him. So figuring that out and finding out how that works is really important. And as this clip plays, I want you to watch how I end up trying to split myself away from the X once it is no longer um, my core to control. So the second I no longer have core control, I separate from him because he kind of follows the core a little bit and ends up getting close to me and we getting, get stuck together. But I'm in control of the core, so I maintain control. The second I lose it and the X is still with me, I intentionally spread out and give him the opportunity to control the core. In this clip, the rune has ended up uh, pretty close to me. This has been a little bit of a cluster. It is a normal game, so I'm not like too surprised by this, but we've ended up up here. I'm about to come out and get control of the core and get it back on their side of the map and maintain possession there. Now, if the rune in this instance had just rotated down to the open space, the entire bottom half of the map is open. Literally nobody is on the bottom half of the map. If he had rotated down there, he will have gotten the core and would have scored in this clip. 
Now you could say, well, the Dubu would have hit it differently if the rune wasn't down there, and you could very well be right. Um, the rune, or uh, the Dubu, might not have cleared down, but his options would have been a lot less limited because he wasn't going to clear through me. So it would have given myself or the rune a chance to score a goal. But when we were together like this, the Dubu had a really easy clear and neither of us could get there and close this score out because we weren't spread out. General rule number two, be somewhere you could be passed to. Sure, your teammates won't always pass to you. In fact, sometimes they shouldn't be passing to you, but giving them the option is gonna give you more opportunities. The idea of a pass didn't occur to me until I was in probably high gold uh, or low platinum. Um, as the community grows, it's going to be more commonplace in the lower ranks as well, so you might as well get used to it. In this clip here, we just got a double KO, and we're set up in a prime position to 1v3 their goalie. The goalie doesn't have a chance in this, as long as I make myself open for the pass, which I do, and then Octavia passes it, which they don't. I think we end up failing to convert on this, but ultimately, the point is... If you're available for the pass, it's more likely to happen and it's gonna give you a best chance of success. In this clip, you can even see that I get frustrated and impatient with Octavia not passing it to me. So I use my glitch pop to try and either get it past the Dubu or send it to me myself. Uh, and the moment I do is of course, when Octavia finally decided it's my turn to touch the core. Um, so I send it back to our side of the field, and this is going back to my last point, let them cook. You just gotta trust the person over there to do what they should do, because they eventually did it. It just took them a little bit of ping pong action to figure it out, and once they did figure it out, it was gonna come to me, it would've worked out, but I ruined it because I got impatient. The last general rule for positioning as a forward is to try and play on the same side of the map as the core. If the core is on the enemy side of the map, you should generally be no further back than midfield. This is dependent on your area of influence that we discussed earlier. Strikers such as X or Juliet need to play a lot closer to the core and where the core is going to be than strikers such as Aimee or Estelle whose area of influence allows them to sit in midfield and wait for opportunities to intercept passes or influence the direction of the core. When you are not playing on the same side of the core, you are giving up valuable pressure that your team needs to score. There of course are exceptions to this, like when you're getting punched in the face by X. In this clip, we're going to explain why Rune shouldn't be in the goal and how he's making the enemy Dubu's job very easy and our Dubu's job very hard. It's a simple trap. You think that you can help the goalie out by existing in the goal and helping them clear the core. Unfortunately, you'll notice in this clip that the opposing Octavia is already off the map. In fact, she won't be back for another five seconds. So we should be a striker up. But if you look at where the rune is, you'll notice that we're basically not a striker up. We're basically even right now. So what could the rune be doing here and what should the rune be doing? Uh, the green circle is roughly where I estimate the rune should be standing at the start of this clip. Uh, this core has been moving back a lot right now. The Dubu's been doing a great job controlling it though and sending it back to our side of the, the enemy side of the field. So Rune should be probably down here. And then as I'm getting the core here and I'm moving towards the enemy side of the field, the Rune should be moving up to the yellow-ish area. Because, and you'll see this in the clip, there would have been a really easy pass to the Rune if they were there. I will move my mouse down to about that area as if to pass it to someone and then realize that no one's there and then get completely stuffed by the Dubu because I now don't really have much that I can do about this. If I just had someone standing there, doesn't have to be a rune, it could be anyone that can hit the strike button, that's a free bumper. And it should be because we should have striker advantage. But alas, here we are. So thinking about how to be on the same side as the core so that you're exerting pressure is more helpful to your goalie than sitting in the goal box. 
which this entire game, I think I scored one goal and it was hard fought. The enemy Dubu had the easiest time in the world because he only had to clear away from one forward basically the whole game. So it made this Dubu look like an iron wall, which I'm not dissing the Dubu player. They weren't terrible or anything, but it made it impossible for me to be able to execute anything just because someone wasn't standing on our side, uh, the enemy's side of the map. So this is really important. This is the type of thing you need to think about when you're playing in your games. Unfortunately, this same rune player was a gold mine of clips explaining why you should be somewhere else and why you shouldn't be standing in the goal box. So in this clip, you can see the core is on their side of the map. And it's actually been here for a while. Um, as you can see, the Dubu just struck it back to me and I'm going to strike it down because I can't strike it through the Dubu. There's no way for me to hit that bumper directly. I probably could have aimed this at the bottom corner of the bumper and maybe got it, but let's ignore that. I was hoping that my rune would be somewhere down there. Th they weren't, so this does nothing. But you can notice if the rune was on the same side of the map as the core, and if they were down in that red area that I circled, they would very easily be able to slide up and just tap the core into the bumper. They would get the lock, the gates would open, and we'd be uh, good as gold. So again, think about how you can always be playing almost in a line with your forward because that would have been very useful here. We're both midfielders, so that's what you do. Um, and we would have had the ability to break their defense here and open the gates. In this clip again, you're gonna see why Rune should be standing anywhere in this red zone. When I hit the core towards the bumper, the Dubu just gets in the way and he clears it out to this giant open chasm that is created by my Rune not being there. If my rune was just standing there, just standing, not doing anything, we would again have another free bumper, or at least the Dubu couldn't just clear it around me. When the Dubu does this, it makes it basically impossible for me to be able to get the bumper. And I'm not here saying I need all the glory. I don't care. The rune can get the lock and we can move on with our day, but I need them in position to be able to do it. Otherwise, I'm just playing the game by myself as a forward. And this ends up putting a lot of pressure on myself to basically 3v1. And you can see that. Look at where all three of their players are in this clip. They're in the top quadrant that I'm in. So we're in the same quadrant of the map. And if my rune was just on the other side, probably one of them would follow him. And maybe this bumper wouldn't be as free. But it would give me a chance to do something. It would give him a chance to do something. And he's not doing our Dubu any favor because this core gets cleared around me and just goes right back towards our side of the field. And then this is the part where I remind you that we're not here to flame this rune. It's also why their name's hidden because, you know, they were just playing a game, having a good time, trying their best, and that's all that matters. Now, before we close this video out, we're going to have a few sections to really get you thinking about your positioning so that when you're in your games, you might be able to recognize your bad positioning. Being able to recognize your bad positioning is the first step to correcting it. So being aware of what you should be doing and what you should be thinking about will allow you to pr improve your positioning. So first off, how do you be open for passes? Being open for passes is a lot simpler than it sounds. Find passing windows and then stand in them. Congratulations, you've done it. So in this clip that I'm gonna show you here, you can see that I've highlighted the passing window in yellow, and I'm going to get the core through the Juliet to the Octavia there. And the Octavia where they're currently standing is too close, so there's not enough time for them to react, strike the core and get the bumper. Because of that, if they were standing just a little bit more down in this yellow section, I could get the core to them and they would really easily get this bumper for us and we'd be moving on in the game. As I told my basketball team that I was coaching, find the open space and sit there. If the core doesn't come to you, reposition so that you are somewhere else that you can get the core. 
The core also isn't coming to you just because you are in a position where you can get the core. Your teammates have to believe that passing it to you would be the easiest option to produce a positive outcome or they won't be likely to do it. Passing windows are also time sensitive and you can't always wait for your teammate to get to the spot before sending the core there. Sometimes you just have to trust that they're going to get there and do what they need to do. In this clip here, Dubu throws the core to a spot and is hoping that I will get there in time before the Octavia and that I will pull it out and get it on the opposing side of the map, which I do. How to cut off passes. This is the same concept as the last section, except now you're going to be standing in the passing windows that the enemy has. This way, they cannot utilize them easily. In this clip here, the Vice is trying to get the ball up the field to her Octavia. By being in the position I'm in, in front of the Octavia, closer to Vice, I can easily walk up, intercept this pass, and then hit it towards their bumper to get the second lock of the map. Being aware of your positioning and being between the two strikers, Octavia and Vice, allowed me to get there, get the core, and clear it out the way I wanted to. As many of the midfield characters, such as Aimee, Era, Rune, Estelle, to name a few, I'll be looking to intercept passes with my abilities. In this clip, you can see I'm about to throw out a glitch pop as the core is moving up towards the goal. In fact, it looks like at this angle, it's going to be a perfect corner shot if the Vice doesn't do something. So the Vice is going to come forward, or I'm anticipating they will, and they're going to try to make a pass out to either the Octavia or the Rasmus. Now I see this and I decide to shoot my glitch pop down. If the Vice does nothing, at worst, it's just going to redirect the core, probably towards the direction of their goal. Um, but if the Vice steps up, I'm going to hold it until she strikes it and then pop it so that I can just send it right back straight past her, which is what you're going to see is going to happen here. I want to note my positioning here. Notice that I'm positioning almost exactly so that the glitch pop at its maximum range is going to be right where I want it to be. This is very intentional on my part, and it's about understanding your character and their abilities and making sure you know how to use them. It also prevents one of Vice's um, clear out routes because she will no longer be able to hit the core up as I'm there. So then her best option ends up being down. This stops working as the players get better. I've noted uh, the glitch pop, they'll just wait it out. They'll just patiently follow the core and they'll clear it out after your glitch pop. But all the way even to mid diamond this has worked very well for me and so understanding your abilities and how to utilize them and how to get the most out of breaking up the passes and also using your own positioning to act as another zone on top of that to prevent the goalie from clearing it out that way and making it really hard for them to do so is an important skill to learn this of course is character specific as to how you do this this is just an example of i me because that's what i play in this clip here, notice how I got myself between the Estelle and Rune when the core is in front of our goal. If you've been paying attention to this positioning guide, you'll notice that the two forwards, Estelle and Rune, should be more spread out and playing on each other's flanks. Why? This is for a cross pass. As we already mentioned, Atlas is pretty bad against cross passes because of his lack of mobility. So setting yourself up for a cross pass is a really good idea, especially against Atlas. And so my job as a forward, if I don't have control of the core and I don't have a better position I can stand uh, to help my goalie, should be between these two forwards because I'm cutting off a passing lane. So if Estelle gets the core, she now has to take a shot on Atlas and any goalie worth their salt who has cooldowns up is going to be able to hold in basically any one-on-one. -on -one. There are exceptions, of course, but... In general, the Atlas can handle it just fine if the Estelle has the core, or if the Rune has the core individually. The second they can pass the core between them is the second the Atlas is going to have trouble. So just by standing here, I cut that off, and then you can even see if the core does try to come between them, I have an easy clear out to the other side of the field, where then I can start to play the game by myself. So thinking about these things is really important. Um, I don't think anything comes from it in this clip. And I will say this is more important as you go higher in the uh, ladder. In general, 
it's better to cut off passes with your positioning rather than using abilities. How to be an outlet for your goalie without being a goalie. Simply put, this is being open for passes from your goalie. The best thing you can do for your goalie is be in a space where they can clear the core to you and you can move the core up the field. So in this clip, you can see that the uh, vice has a clear passing window to me. Now, how does this window occur? Well, it occurred because I threw a glitch pop up to hit the Juliet. Now, it's very important that when you throw abilities with the intent of hitting a character to stun them momentarily so that the vice has a window here to clear to me without getting stuffed, that you do not hit the core, okay? This is a hard thing to master and it takes a lot of practice. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you the only way to practice is by doing. So you're gonna do it a bunch of times and a bunch of times you're gonna hit the core and that's okay. But you need to understand that it is imperative that it doesn't hit the core. So every time you do it and you hit the core, be a little frustrated, that's fine. But don't be discouraged from trying it because it's something you are going to need to get good at if you wanna get better. Then with our positioning, notice that we're again spread out from our Octavia and we're down somewhere that we're open. This gives us a whole open field ahead of us with which we can attempt to make a play on the Dubu. So the vice will get this to us because the vice is panicking and trying to, you know, not let this hit the bumper here. So they're gonna get it down to us and then we'll clear it out. And in this clip, you're gonna see really quickly how I position myself twice to help my rune out. Once at the bottom, just like you saw before, I'm gonna create space by coming out so that the pass can come down. And then once I'm gonna get right under the Rasmus so that the rune has another clear path to me during this clip. How to position while staggered. While staggered, you have two main things to keep in mind. One, you wanna keep pressure, and two, you obviously don't wanna die. Keeping pressure can be difficult because you have to be very mindful of the areas of influence that the other characters have and how they could kill you. It is more important that you pay attention to their cooldowns now than ever because you have to ask yourself the question, do they have the ability to kill me? Also, don't forget that Core Flip can knock you off the map. In general, if there's nobody there, your best bet is to stand in the middle-ish of the map, as that'll make it hard for you to knock out. And don't forget that if you stand along the edges of the map, in the what the players call the bumpers, I don't call them that because I forget that's what they're called, but if you stand there, you actually can't be knocked back off the map. Uh, if a player gets under or above you, though, they can directionally shoot you off the map, so you've got to be careful for that. But if they're getting themselves in that position, just walk away, right? So keeping yourself away from the other players is really important. And keep in mind that if someone is intent on killing you and you don't let that happen, they probably haven't been playing the core game very much. They haven't been paying attention to the core. They haven't been positioning around that. They've been playing this cat and mouse game with you, which have left your teammates and the other team in a 2v2, which is fine. You've done your job. You've taken someone else out of the game. You've made it a 2v2, and that's keeping up pressure. The second that person turns around and starts ignoring you, though, is the second you have to get yourself back out there. Um, usually playing on, if the core is on the enemy side of the field, playing on the back half of the midfield is acceptable here. So you'll just play a little behind midfield because the other team isn't going to be chasing you that far. Otherwise, they're out of position to help their goalie. And then if it's on your side of the field, just stand in a position where the core could get uh, cleared to you by your goalie, where you're away from everyone, and just try to be as safe as possible. Either that or be in the middle of the two players and try to intercept the passes between them. Either of these two things will allow you to easily maintain your stagger and your liveliness and give it that time to regen. Other things to note about trying not to die, remember that the edges of the map are very scary places. If you're touching the edge and get hit by like anything, you will just instantly die. That is also true for the center of Imi's app. Also on Atlas, you know, make sure you are aware of the galaxy and when it respawns and if you're in it or not. I died to that thing too often. And then one final note is remember that expending core flip to evade is better than dying because you lose your core flip. And 
if you have to give up a health orb to not die, just that's fine. You'll wait a little bit longer, you'll get more health, but you won't be dead. So don't sacrifice your life for health orbs. And then core flip is better to evade and not die than to just, no, oh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to use it because if you die with it, it's just the worst feeling ever. Through the course of this video, I hope you found something that you can take away to improve your own gameplay. I hope this has helped you take a deeper look at your positioning and where you should and should not be. As a reminder, the general forwarding positioning rules are to be spread out, be somewhere you could be passed to, and try to play on the same side of the map as the core. My name's Love and Drunk, and you can find a link to my Twitch in the description where you can come join in on the live chat, ask any questions you want, I'd be happy to answer. I would also like to shout out the Clockwork Mage who helped me write the script for this video. He peer reviewed it and made sure that it was up to snuff. A uh, link to his YouTube will be in the description as well, and you can go check him out there. And that'll be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new today.